One of the challenges of deciding to move abroad and specifically as an African immigrant to the United States and deci who's deciding to move back to Africa is the reaction of family members or friends who feel like you have left the continent to fulfill and reach the American dream. And now why would you want to come back to Africa where basically things are not better? And so in this video, I wanted to try, because I think that it's going to take more than one video to fully explain my thoughts and process my thoughts around this complexity and really trying to understand, even in my own case, how I'm processing certain things and how I'm trying to make sense of what we're trying to do. And I also have to acknowledge that my experience is different from my husband's experience because we just grew up in two different environments, right? So his motivations and my motivations, maybe at surface level could be the same, could be similar, but then deep down based on our own personal experiences, certain things might be more important to him than to me or vice versa, okay? And parts of his family might react differently than parts of my family as well. So that's just one thing that I have to put out there. But I was just thinking about what it meant for me to leave the continent and come here. So a little bit of background. I was born and raised in Morocco in North Africa, okay? So not in Sub-Saharan Africa. But I am originally from the Congo in Central Africa, okay? So that's important to know. And so one of my goals or dreams, aspirations, were to leave Morocco and continue my studies in the US, okay? And so I'm very grateful that I got to do that. And that's, an, that's a video for another time, but I personally do believe that there's such a thing as the American dream. And I think that you can ask any immigrant that question and they will say yes. Why? Because as a person who comes to the United States voluntarily for a better life, chances are they do get it. They do get a better life. So I'm talking from this perspective of an African immigrant who comes for school. I'm not talking from the perspective of American born person who maybe doesn't believe in the American dream or maybe would say that the American dream has changed. I don't know. I'm not that person. I'm, I can only talk about me, right? And so I do believe that there are multiple definitions of the American dream. It has probably shifted since it started, I think, after World War II. And so it's a little different. But for somebody who is immigrating to the United States voluntarily for a better life, and for me it was for to continue grad school, I would say that I have checked the boxes, right? So came to school, I was able to go to school, I was able to get a master's degree, I was able to get a PhD, I was able to get a job, I was able to uh, meet my husband, I was able to... Um, start a business, I was able to have the big house in the suburbs, I was able to have kids here, and, right? All of the, you know, check boxes, having a great job that I really loved and everything, great colleagues and everything. So on paper, everything was great, right? I had accomplished the American dream that I was looking for. And so in a previous video, I talked about what are some of the reasons why a lot of Americans would want to move abroad and that for a lot of people, outside of the United States who look up to the United States and look at, at the U.S. as the promised land, like the place where everybody wants to go to, and they're like scratch, scratching their heads, and I'm going to say we because that was my case too, scratching their heads like, why would you want to leave? <laughs> why would you want to leave the U.S., right, and, and come here or, you know, something like that? And so in that video, I will link it somewhere here, I talked about how I can maybe understand it through the uh, theory of the pyramid of Maslow, right? So you have all your basics needs met, and then as you go up in the pyramid, now you can aspire to other things. I would say the average American has passed <laughs> the, the lower levels of the pyramid, right? Safety, uh, shelter, all of these things, right? And so for most of the cases, people who want to move abroad, who want to leave the US, in a lot of cases, I'm not saying all of them, is because of self-actualization. It's because of wanting new horizons, wanting to explore new horizons, wanting to, to see something else. Like it's more like for peace of mind, right? In that sense. So that's at the, 
higher level of the, of the hierarchy. However, for a lot of people who want to move here to the US, it's because they want to fulfill lower levels of the hierarchy, okay? General, generalizations, I know, but most of the cases that that's what it is. And so now I feel like I have met those needs and now I feel like as an African, as okay, let me back up. Usually as an immigrant coming here in the United States through school, the goal is this, and this is why to us, the American dream is real because it's logical and because the system works, okay? You might agree with the system or you might not agree with it, but in general terms, as an immigrant who comes here legally for school, this is the process and it usually works pretty well. You come here for, to get a degree, that's step one. You graduate, you get a job. You get a job and you can reach your financial goals, like you get a good paying job. Because usually when you come to the United States, it's usually like immigrants, usually African immigrants, we usually come for like science, science degrees, right? I'm not a scientist, but that's, that was my case. But in a lot of cases, it's like for engineering, med school and things like that, right? So you get a very high paying job, right? So the money making machine is working pretty well, right? It's usually not to get low entry jobs. It's like you get into nursing, you get very highly paying jobs. And so I'm looking at my notes here to make sure that I don't forget anything. And so once you master that money making machine and once you're in the system and you're like, okay, check all the boxes, okay, because you wanna, you wanna get into certain levels. Finish school, get a job, get the house, get the car, start a family, all these markers, right? And once you're at, the, at that level, which the system allows you to do that, okay? You can agree with the system or not, but from an immigrant's perspective, the system works, right? And so you get through those levels and once you master the, mach the money-making machine and you can reach your financial goals or you can sustain your life, your family right here, you get to the level where you know that you're always looking back. You're always looking back home. When you were studying, you couldn't really, you were looking back, but there was not much that you could do. You were not really making money. And as an international student, there are certain rules about how much, how many hours you can work. You can only work on campus and you can only work 20 hours on campus. Okay. So you're not making a lot of money. Okay. And plus you have to pay for schooling as well. So your family back home is, not that dependent on you. They don't really expect much from you at that point. But once you have a job that pays pretty well, you're looking, you keep looking back home and now you can help. You can send money back. You can build something back home and all of that, right? So that's where once you master that money-making machine and you understand different ways you can make more money, whether it's real estate, businesses, investments, all these different ways, now you can get to a place where you're like, okay, the self-actualization place where it's less about accumulating money, but it's more about impact, right? So it's more about, okay, I've been sending money back home, but I think that I would be more at peace living there as well. Because here's the thing, capitalism works really well. It's a, the money-making machine works really well. However, it's not sustainable, meaning that it's gonna work as long as you wanna work it, right? As long as you wanna be in it, you can make money, but you're gonna put it in the work. And at some point, you're gonna look at your life and say, I could keep working like a dog and make more money, or you can say, okay, I've made enough money and I understand other ways I can make money without having to work like a dog to make 10 times more money, but I want to enjoy what I have and I want to help other people. I want to have more impact. So when you get to that level, now you're like looking back and you're like, okay, I think I want to go back home. I think now is the right time to go back home. And so a lot of 
African parents, maybe who brought their kids here, or send their kids here, might not understand why we want to go back. And and that's okay because for them, they they really their dream, their hopes. It's always the parent always wants their kids to do well, to do better than them. And so we appreciate that, and we're very very grateful. But at the same time, we've done what we we were sent here to do, right? We've done, we've contributed to American society and we keep contributing and all of that. And we have that dual culture or multiple culture, depending on your background. And we feel an attachment home and we feel an attachment here. And we know that we can work the system here, the capitalistic system to make money. And we know that back home, that money will go a lot further. So you can keep making those investments, sending the money and everything, um, like while still being here and working and all that. But at some point, you will prioritize peace of mind over the working working dog machine, right? So I know that if, um, I mean, I don't know if you can relate to what I'm trying to say, if you're an African immigrant who came here to the US for work or for, for school, let me know if you can relate to that and how you would explain it because it's, it's, it's very complex and it's very, um, it's a very interesting thing to, to try to understand, right? And as, and this is not something that just happens overnight because even for me, I've been here for like 20 years. And for, if you had asked me the first, let's say five years that I was here in the US, if I wanted to go back, I would have said no, nah, because I wasn't thinking about that. I was building, I was trying to get to those levels, right? But at some point, once you get to this level, you realize, okay, you're trying to stop and think, okay, what's really important? I've done all these things. And I think that applies to everybody, right? Everybody, like whether you're an immigrant or not. You've had the big job, you've had, you have the family, you have the house, you have everything on paper that looks really good. And then you're like, okay, what's next? But not like the next level, but more like what's more meaningful? What is more impactful, right? And so for us African immigrants, it can be seen as, <laughs> as, uh, as a shock from friends or family members because they're like, oh, why are you coming back here? But at the same time, there's another mission to going back that way because you're not going back the same way you, you left, okay? Again, you wouldn't have come back the first three years or five years you had, you know, you had left. You have accumulated certain things experiences, um, knowledge, um, degrees, work, money, connections, network, all of these things that have equipped you now to be able to go back and have a uh, more impact, right? So yeah, that's what I wanted to share to trying to, to trying to explain, I don't know if it's an explanation, but trying to process the why so many um, immigrants um, are thinking about going back. And it's not that we dislike America, far from that, because it's because of America and, and that system that has allowed us to have certain benefits, certain privileges and all of that. And so we can use both sides, right? Just like an American born can use the privilege of having an American passport and say, hey, I can go to Mexico and move there or I can go to France and move there. It's just different people have different privileges and it's, you just have to, you don't have to feel guilty about it. You just have to be aware of it and not, um, not feel like, um, like be defensive. Like, oh, it's a bad thing to have a privilege. I mean, it, it just happens. Everybody has some kind of privilege depending on the context, right? And so you just have to acknowledge it and, and yeah, and move forward, right? It's not a bad thing. 
So nobody's going to get rid of their privilege. <laughs> Nobody, right? Whatever privilege you have, chances are you're not going to get rid of it. So you just use it in a way that, um, that does good for you and for other people as well. Okay. So I don't want to be too long, but that's how I wanted to kind of talk about, about that and trying to, um, to help other people who are in the same situation as me, because uh, there's a lot of us I've noticed out there um, who came to the U.S. as immigrants for school or and, and we've spent 10 years here, 20 years here, 30 years here. And the idea of going back is not always well understood. And so this is just one step in the conversation of um, why we are considering going going back. Okay, so... Let me know your thoughts in the comments and uh, if you haven't seen the other video where I talk about the pyramid of needs of Maslow, I will link it in this video as well. All right, until next time, bye.